Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another show as we get to the end of the year 2020. We are approaching 2021, all right? And uh, before I introduce the attorneys on the show right here on 93.5 WVIP FM, and also, of course, on Facebook, I'll take 15 seconds to talk about this meme that I saw. The meme says, isn't it weird that next year is 2020 WON 2021? Well, that was pretty weird. Nobody here gets it? None of the attorneys here gets it? Ah, oh, come on, man. You guys are killing my humor this morning. Anyway, let's start. Hey, can you, maybe, maybe you should repeat that. I, 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 WON? Yeah, 2021. Nobody gets it. He, he, he means O-N-E. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it sounds like 2021, W-O-N. So 2020, right. like, beat the competition, in other words, that they won. 20, 2020 beat the hell out of us, you know. Got it. Sorry, corny joke. All right, what a way to start. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Cruising with a Case Sadler, a show on personal injury and immigration and more. The firm that brings it to you happens to be Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and Nesico, a full-service law firm. And this morning, we have three attorneys right here on the show, and we're going to be introducing a new attorney to the panel anyway, but not new to, of course, what it is that he does in the capacity at PPID. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you had a wonderful week so far. Um, Conrad Pollock, a managed partner, is on. is no stranger to, of course, this. We've got the general, okay, Alan E.K. He's no stranger to this. Welcome, gentlemen. How is everything? How has your week been so far? So far, so good. All good. Okay. It's been a relatively quiet week. You know, we've been we've been working on that same case that we've been talking about for the last few weeks, where right. uh, our client has been detained. You know, he was it, the there was a clip on WPIX television uh, last week, right. and um, he's been moved from detention, immigration detention in Louisiana, and now he is in uh, New Jersey. And we filed a habeas corpus action, which is basically a appeal to the federal court to try to get him out working on that um and talking to all our all the generals contacts i should say speaking to our senators gillibrand's office involved schumer's office involved and we're doing everything we can to get him out of jail and keep him here Turning up um, the heat. That, so that's, that's been good... pretty much the focus it's been a relatively quiet week otherwise but that's been pretty much the focus in our immigration department uh jacob aaron uh, is okay. uh this gentleman in the uh in that pink sweater that he's wearing. Is it pink? I don't know. Orange? It it like it, maybe in between pink and orange. No, let's say pink. Pink, <laughs> pink, is, pink fits. Uh, anyway, Jacob Aronauer has been with the firm now. He's been up counsel with PPID now for several years. Um, and he handles all the employment related issues uh, that, that come up. And they do come up. Employees, so, so employers for lost wages or unemployment issues or things like that so you know we've been trying to get jacob on the show for a long time but he is a very very busy man and uh we finally caught him on an off day and dragged him into uh the office and uh, i mean he didn't even have a chance to clean up his office you can see how busy he's been <laughs> and um yeah. and he's here to talk about employment related issues with us today beautiful i can tell he's a proactive guy which is extremely important in being an attorney from what i Notice with you gentlemen yesterday logged on at 2 49 p.m to check out the zoom link to make sure it works and everything so jacob welcome to the show man it's my that's the that's the i got the pronunciation right now right aranoir yes yes okay my great pleasure. okay so you've been at ppid for several years now and i want the caribbean community and beyond which is primarily the um audience and the market that we have that listens to us to, f to know more about exactly what you do, employment-related issues. Why don't you um, give us a little bit of an expansion on that as to what that is, what that could be, and how people listening to you right now here on 93.5, also on Facebook, how you can help them in the employment-related um, issues capacity. Sure, and first, you know, again, thank you for having me on. I've been watching on uh, Facebook for uh, several months and uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, <laughs> In terms of my practice, I would say approximately 85% of it is uh, unpaid wage cases on behalf of immigrants. 
So uh, I represent construction workers, uh, maybe delivery workers in the restaurant industry. And I also represent uh, home aides and uh, service employees. Uh, you know, for example, right now I'm actually representing a woman who's originally from Jamaica who mm -hmm. worked as a home aide on behalf of an elderly couple. And the granddaughter who was paying my client did not pay her overtime, even though she was working 65 hours a week. Wow. And uh, so right now we're suing for unpaid wages. And I would just note that, unfortunately, it does seem to be a common theme that, you know, employers can be very tough to begin with. And it seems as if when you have illegal, when they're employing illegal immigrants or just immigrants in general, they try to take advantage and not pay them correctly. And if there's one thing I'd like to get out of this radio session is that a lot of times in potential client meetings, the client will say to me, you know, my immigration status in America, it's, it's not kosher, it's less than ideal. And mm -hmm. my response is, you can still sue for unpaid wages, even if your immigration status is not good. Right. I, I was actually going to ask you that, Jacob. And by the way, let me just say this. Once again, folks, if you're just joining us, it's the show Cruising with the Case Sadler, Personal Injury, Immigration. And do remember that they're a full service law firm and we're speaking about employment related issues. Now, Jacob, pretty much what I just gathered from what you said is that if someone is out of status, if someone is here, as they would put it, as our current president loved to use it, illegal in this country, you're saying that they can sue for you know, wages that they are owed. That's pretty much what you're saying, regardless of their status. Correct, that's what I'm saying. And what's happened is, you know, that issue has obviously come up in court. And right. the courts have routinely held that an employee's immigration status is not discoverable, which means basically, in layman's terms, you can't ask for information pertaining to the immigration status. And, you know, the, the reasoning makes sense because if employers knew that they could get this information if an employee were to sue them, then what they would do is they would, it would basically give them a blank check not to pay immigrants correctly at all. So this sort right. of the checks and balance by the court saying, no, you can't ask for this information. Wow. Uh, is it possible? What if the, the, the employer now decides to terminate the employee? Would there be repercussions? Do they have a recourse um, with that, your clients? Well, it would depend why they, they uh, terminated them. So, you know, in New York, it's what you call at will. Mm -hmm. So an employer can fire an employee for lack of a better word, any reason. Right. But with that being said, there are certain things an employer cannot fire an employee for. So for example, if an employee were to tell the employer, uh, I'm gay, and uh, meet my uh, my new husband. And the employer said, well, I don't like gay people. I'm going to fire you. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an example where the employee would have a very good basis for a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So usually what happens is when a, a potential client walks into my office in terms of termination, uh, I'll do like a checklist. All the right, reasons right. why, you know, unprotected activity under the law, that could be the basis for a lawsuit. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, there isn't, a great lawsuit in terms of the termination, but then I'll ask, but hey, how were you paid? Right, right. And uh, and then it turns out there's a very good unpaid wage claim. Okay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Aranara, all right, here with us on the show, um, speaking about employment related issues. If anyone out there, regardless of your immigration status, having any employment issues, it is extremely important that you call the firm, 844 Seven seven four three five two nine, and speak with Jacob, one of the attorneys at the firm. Once again, the number is eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Now, Conrad and Alan, how do you guys cross paths when you are all working with Jacob at the firm? And you're you're muted, um, Conrad. You need to unmute. I was actually just going to ask a question, which is related to what you just asked. Um, Jacob, you know, um, I have a client who, whether he's an immigrant or not, he's working and he feels that his employer is taking advantage of him. Maybe he promised, right, him, maybe he promised him $20 an hour and he's only paying him 15 I mean, 
what would that person do? He comes to you and he says, you know, Mr. Aronauer, what can I do? Well, it, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, if the employer were to say, hey, come work for me and I promise I'll pay you $20 an hour. And then it turns out he's only paying him 15 or 16. You know, in, in theory, you could have a breach of contract case, uh, but it wouldn't. Well, what if what if the person doesn't have a green card? What if the person is here illegally and he's, he, and he's working off the books? If he's working off the books, he could still have a case for unpaid wages. But if it's just a breach of contract case, in other words, I'm sorry. So let me take a step back. If the employer is still paying the immigrant, the legal immigrant, if he doesn't have his green card, if he's paying them correctly under the law, you know, he doesn't have a, a, a basis for a lawsuit for unpaid wages, but he could potentially have a, a lawsuit for breach of contract. Do you follow the distinction? Not yet. Okay, I'm sorry. So in other words, let me try it again. There are certain payment obligations an employer ha has, regardless of the employee's immigration status. You know, for example, in New York City, you have to pay a minimum of $15 an hour. So in common, right, and, and, by, and by the way, let me interrupt. I mean, that's a, that's regardless of the person's status, whether you're illegal, legal, or not. If you're working, you you have to, you're entitled to be paid regardless of your status. I mean, the employer can't say, well, you know, I hired you for, and I'm going to pay you in two weeks, and then two weeks go by. It says, well, you know, you don't have a green card. I'm not paying you. The employer can't do that. Oh yeah, I mean, if the employer were to say, hey, you know, you're an illegal immigrant, you're just lucky to have a job. I'm only going to pay you ten dollars an hour then you would have a very good case. I think the issue is if an employer were to induce an employee to work for them and promise 25 or 30 an hour, and then once the employment started, it went down to 20, you know, you technically could have potentially a breach of contract claim, but you know, the employer still have a lot of power, unfortunately. So I don't, you know, the employer could say circumstances change, so now I have to pay you less. So I, I think, you know, where uh, the strongest case would be a situation where the employer finds out that somebody's, somebody's status isn't great, so then they pay them less than the minimum wage, or they don't pay them okay, so, for all hours work. All right, so the person is an illegal immigrant, and he's been working, and whatever happens between him and his employer, isn't it risky for that worker who doesn't have a green card to make trouble for the, for the employer, to right. say, I'm going to report you, or whatever? Can he get... Can he get turned into immigration and, and be deported? Uh, the short answer is on rare, rare occasions, I've seen an employer take an adverse retaliatory action doing that. It's very, very unusual. And that would be considered unlawful retaliation under both the Fair Labor Standards Act, which is a federal law, as well as New York labor law. And the employer would really be doing that at their own peril because judges hate that. And, and but, what, but the employer also could be fined also for hiring an, you know, an illegal. Yeah, immigrant. but that's, that's, that's an immigration matter. That has nothing to do with the courts. That's a separate matter with the Department of Labor or with the USCIS. So that's, they're not even in, in the picture. And that's something the employer would need to be concerned about. Right, not that's the what alien, I'm not the that's what I'm, Right, that's what I'm saying. The employer, the employer, if he's going to, if he or she is going to be retaliatory, then the employer at the same time should be like, whoa, well. Yeah, you know. but you know, but most employees, especially if they're illegal, I don't really envision the average guy in that situation calling the labor department or calling the immigration service and say, hey, you know, excuse me, sir, but you know, I've been illegally in this country for the last 10 years. I've been working at this place and he won't, he doesn't pay me. I think you should go find the guys. They might. Right. right, but I don't know. I don't really envision a lot of people making that phone call. Alan, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, when I was going to say, Jacob, somebody listening to this program who wants to get in touch with you, uh, they, what do they do? Call you or make an appointment if they want to end the squeeze? Let's give a number so that people can get in touch with Jacob. Look at Alan go, man! I'm so proud of you, man! <laughs> wow! <laughs> All right, so 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 once again, everybody out there. I do believe that this is an extremely important area. And keep in mind, once you pick up the phone and you call Jacob, everything is confidential. So if you believe that you have a case against your employer or your employer is treating you unfairly, at least have a conversation with Jacob to find out if you have any recourse with your situation. 
So right now, every single person that's tuning into 93.5 FM, watching us on Facebook, call this number now. Get a consultation with Jacob. Explain your situation with them because there are many employers out there who are treating you very, very unfairly. The number to call is 844-774-3529. Call right this second. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Three five two nine. I grew up in the Bronx, and I have heard, seen the horror stor stories, the nightmares of how employers treat people who are out of status. So find out, can you get help? The number once again is eight four four P P I D L A W. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Now, you know, squeeze. I I asked. Excuse me. I, I asked these questions for Jacob deliberately because, <clears throat> just like you just said, I mean. And it doesn't matter where you are. It could be the Bronx, it could be Brooklyn, it could be Idaho. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, employers, unfortunately, there are unscrupulous employers out there that will take advantage. Right. You know, or they'll, they'll see, hey, this guy has a, doesn't have a green card, and I could pay him 10 bucks an hour, where if he had a green card, I got to pay him 20 bucks an hour. So there are employers out there that will take advantage, right? And the point here is that, that by me asking Jacob all these questions, which I know the answers to already, I'm asking him these questions for a reason, um, you know, or, or you folks listening out there, just because you may not be in status, or even if you are, you know, you have rights and the employers have obligations and you can hold their feet to the fire if that's the case. So um, it is always worth uh, discussing that with an employment attorney. Hey, even I, you know, and I've been an employer now for 35 years and you can ask our, our staff, I abuse all of them. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob's suing us constantly. No, but I, that's a, that's a joke, folks. Um, yeah. Even when I have questions about employment-related issues um, with regard to disgruntled employees, that oh, rare, rare though they have been, um, you know, I go to Jacob myself with, with questions. I mean, it, he's a very valuable resource. And again, a lot of people out there, uh, and folks, I'm, I'm talking. I'm sure a lot of you are nodding your head right now and saying, "Yeah." Yeah, I know my brother, he's had this issue with his boss. He's a, he's a jerk and he doesn't want to pay him and he doesn't give him any time off and so on. You know, they, there are laws, especially in New York, more than, more than anywhere else. There right. are laws in New York that protect workers from unscrupulous employers like that. So you definitely should get Jacob a call. Okay. All right. Once again, folks, this is Cruising with a Case Handler, a show that is brought to you by the law firm, a full service law firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Anyone out there that needs help in any legal capacity, you know, first, just give the firm a call. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Um, one more question before you go, Jacob. Do you handle employment discrimination? I do. I do. Uh, I represent uh, minorities who are being discriminated against. So, for example, uh, I had a case where... Uh, a current employee was refusing the sexual advances of another employee who was his boss. And then in response, the, uh, the coworker who was his boss actually showed him a noose to try to intimidate him. And uh, wow. yeah, it was, it was really unbelievable. I mean, wow. I mean, when I was in law school and I would read the cases, I'd say this doesn't happen in real life, but it, it does. And you know, we were able to obtain, you know, a con it's confidential, but we were able to obtain a good settlement. So, you know, I do do those cases. I also do sexual harassment cases where, you know, for example, the boss asks an employee out, the subordinate out, and the subordinate says no, and then chaos ensues. So, I mean, obviously, obviously in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of progress in terms of those types of uh, workplace issues. But, uh, it still unfortunately happens and you know my office deals with it. Okay, great. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Aranar, all right, here on the show. He's one of the attorneys at the law firm PPID. Reach out to him. If you have any employment related issues, give him a call. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Call him. Don't sit back. Don't sit on your butt and say, you know what? I'm screwed. I'm painted in a corner. I can't do anything. Regardless of your immigration status, 
make sure you call 844-774-3529. Get your questions answered. Once again, this is a reason why we have the show every single day to help out this community. And we know what's going on out there. So stop having this fear. Speak to the attorney. Then you can decide if you want to move forward with them, hire them. 844-774-3529. Can they still get a free consultation with you before the year ends, uh, Jacob? Of course, I'm always <laughs> available. <laughs> Once again, 844-PPIDLAW. I don't know if you want to hang around. We're going to be speaking on immigration now with um, Conrad and the General Alan E.K. So if you don't mind, we'd love to have you to hang around. Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Yeah, people may be calling in to ask you questions. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And, and, around, and, Jacob. You might learn something. <laughs> learn from anyway. the best. Okay. Anyway, before we uh, get to the questions here, it's a few minutes before the top of the hour. Uh, you are in tune to 93.5 WVIP FM, and we're also live on Facebook with the firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and Nasico. Let's jump over to Alan E.K. We call him the general. We call Conrad Pollock the maestro, but we call Alan E.K. the general because of his depth, his experience, his knowledge in the immigration world. Let's jump to him. I just need two updates before we get to some questions before the top of the hour, Alan. Okay, very good. Okay. The USCIS has announced that there's a backlog in uh, biometrics where you're supposed to be called in to be fingerprinted in a lot of cases. So apparently there are 1.3 million applications awaiting biometric appointments as of mid-December. So uh, it's unfortunate, but you have to be fingerprinted as part of an immigration case. Uh, filing for a working card, a lot of different things you're filing for, you have to be called in for biometrics and they have announced to the public that they're having a problem in terms of getting people in for biometrics. So if you are waiting to hear to be, bi be called in for fingerprinting, they've announced that uh, they're having a problem with that. The second uh, announcement is that uh, in the year 2020, ICE arrests and deportations have dropped sharply uh, because of COVID. So the fact that they're arresting people and deporting people, much less, it's a good news. It's, uh, it's unfortunate it's because of COVID. And it's interesting that the number of immigrants currently being held at USCIS detention facilities and county jails. And by the way, this is the largest immigration detention system in the world. Uh, but in any event, they are, the numbers that they're holding now have gone down from 37,000 in mid-March to 16,000 earlier this month. So the fact that they're arresting people and holding people uh, due to COVID is, you know, unfortunately, not, COVID is not a good idea, not a good thing, but it's helping people from being arrested or locked up by USCIS. Now, I have more, but... Uh, we want to get, leave some time for questions, and I'll come back and give you some more, uh, more of the latest things that are going on. Absolutely. That's the General Alan E.K., one of the uh, top attorneys at the firm, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, if you do have immigration questions, the free phone consultations will end tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day, all right? However, you have heard the experience, the knowledge. We all know we should just hire the firm, all right? Stop going to that person on the corner who claimed that they're a consultant. Don't go to consultants, I will tell you that. Go to PPID, go to one of the attorneys there. Get a free phone consultation right now by calling 844-774-3529. And anyway, you all know you should be hiring an attorney to handle your situation. Don't try to do it yourself. We have seen and heard what has happened when you try to do that, all right? Uh, let's get to some questions right here on the show now before the top of the hour. Um, first question up. My mom is a green card holder, and my category is F2A, child under 21. I received my DQ in April and waiting for my visa interview. My birthday year is 1998. Am I eligible for the visa interview now that I'm over the age of 21? Well, there's a problem because when your mother, who's a U.S. citizen, filed for you, you were in one category. Um, 
but when you became over 21, you went to another category, which is a much longer backlog. So uh, it's going to take longer for you to get your visa now because you're over 21. Okay. And do remember, you can actually call a firm, have them handle the entire situation for you. All of these questions that people do ask on a daily basis, you can get these questions answered by the firm. And especially, it's not costing anything once you've retained them. All right. Um, the number is actually squeeze before yeah. before you get the number that we, with regard to that last question, the CSPA Child Status Protection Act might help her depending on her date of birth. I don't, I wasn't paying attention. I was in the middle of something, um, but depending on the date of birth, depending on the visa category, depending on how long it took for the petition, the I one thirty petition to be approved, the time exactly between the date of filing and the date of approval. If you look, I mean, there's a computation that, that's involved, but she may still, under the law, the CSPA applies here, um, be under the law under 21, which would keep her in the old category. But, you know, this is not something that people are going to be able to handle on, own, on their own. So this person, if, if they want some actual legal advice, I would suggest giving our, giving our office a call. It might be worth your while. Okay. It could, depending if you're eligible, it could save you years, literally, could save you years in terms of processing time. Okay, gotcha. Well said by Conrad Pollock, the managing partner at the firm. Now, do remember, I've always said, hey, I always implore you and say, hey, reach out to the firm. Stop doing it yourself. You know, I grew up in the, in the Bronx. I'm a Jamaican, and I've seen my colleagues, my friends from the Caribbean, whether it's Guyana, Trinidad, all over. Listen to their pastor, listen to the guy around the corner, listen to that person down there in Eastern Parkway and all of that. I'm always saying it. Go to the attorneys at PPID. Very, very important. I mean, your status in the United States is of the highest priority. Why would you want to screw that up? Make the call. 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. Those of you who are listening on 93.5 WVIP-FM, we're going to end the show on 93.5. However, you may uh, switch over to the Facebook account, PPID, the case handler, or David Squeeze Thank you so much for tuning in on 93.5 WVIP FM. We'll catch up with you uh, very soon again. Make sure you make that link. We're on every day, 9.30 a.m. Let's continue with some questions here. It's 10 o'clock. There we go. All right. It says here, hello, I wonder if you have any information about Biden's election promise. Conrad will love this. Those who, uh, whose I-130 form has already been approved will be able to travel to America on a tourist visa. Does it apply to the F-4 form? I know it's very convoluted, but I'm reading it verbatim. Uh, this, so, has, this has nothing to do with Biden's proposal. Yes, I was about to say. <laughs> I mean, oh, it, it, might, it might in terms of the, the, the travel ban, right? I mean, in some convoluted way. I don't really get that question either, but Biden's loosening of the rules and potentially uh, the travel ban, which is due to expire tomorrow, folks. If it's not extended by the end of the day and end of the day tomorrow, that means there's no more travel ban. So somebody in the F4 category, which is sibling, the U.S. citizen applying for sibling, if they're if they're ready to to, to go on their interview and all, they could come. They don't have to wait till that travel ban is lifted. But Alan, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, but generally, if you have an immigrant visa case pending. It's going to be difficult to, for the consulate to give you a visitor's visa. Not impossible, but difficult because they know you're an intending immigrant uh, and they're not going to trust that you're just going to come and visit and go home. So it's going to be difficult. Yeah, well, you know, let, let, you folks listening out there, you shouldn't misunderstand what, what, what's going to happen when Biden, when the Biden administration comes into power. You know, I mean, there are laws, there are regulations, there are rules. Basically, what Biden is going to do, he's going to do his best and hopefully as quickly as possible, undo a lot of the things, a lot of the bad things, a lot of the negative damage that the Trump administration has done. He's not necessarily going to make it easier for you to get a tourist visa. I mean, the law basically says everybody who tries to get a visa to come to the United States is considered an intending immigrant. You're coming here to live permanently. It is up to the applicant to demonstrate that's not the case, they're just coming temporarily. If you applied for your green card, especially sibling, that means your citizen brother or sister applied for you 15, 20 years ago, and you're finally ready to get your green card, you're probably not going to get a tourist visa because, again, the consulate, when you go in there, they're going to say, you look like you're an intending immigrant and you applied to get your green card, which proves that you're an intending immigrant. They're not likely to give you a temporary visa 
uh, in, in that circumstance. Biden is not changing that. I mean, that's the law. Uh, that has nothing to do with Trump. I, and, and it's not going to change under Biden either. That's just a, a simple example of what I'm, what I'm talking about. Gotcha. All right. Well said. 844-774-3529. 844-774-3529. Got one more question, and we're going to come back to Jacob just to reiterate what it is that he does at the firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Misiko. It's great to have him on the show today speaking about employment-related issues. Let's get to this question here. It says here, um, asking for my sister, she gave up her green card and went back to her country 20 years ago. Her children are U.S. citizens. Now they are back in the U.S. for work. Can they sponsor my sister for her green card again? Yes. If the children... Case. The, children new, are, the fact that she had a green card before doesn't help her. They can start a new case. Go ahead, Alan. I'm sorry. Yeah, if the children are U.S. citizens and they're over 21, they can file for their mother. The fact that she had a green card previously doesn't really help because she's been out too long. So the answer is yes, the children can file for her and it won't take very long to get her a new visa, a new yeah, green it's card. A, it's a brand new case. Yep. But everything is brand new. I mean, like you said, the fact that she had a green card before does not help. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Okay. All right. I'll do that. Ladies and gentlemen, 844-774-3529. That's the number for the firm. All right. Um, it's great having Alan and Conrad on answering your immigration questions. You still have a day left to get some free phone consultations. But even after that, why would you want to do your case yourself? We've seen, like I noted before, what has happened so many times. Let's uh, switch it over to the employment related issues. Um, of course, we have an attorney on board this morning. Let's just reiterate what it is that you do, Jacob, as an attorney at the firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Sure. Uh, I represent primarily employees who have not been paid all of the wages that are due to them under both federal and state law. And in addition, I do do some uh, discrimination and retaliation uh, lawsuits as well. And you, you handle that only in New York State, hardly? No, I'm actually, I am admitted in New Jersey. And I'm in the process. I'm getting sworn in on January 4th to a practice in Connecticut. And oh, wow. yeah, I'm, uh, we're definitely trying to expand. And in addition, this is a little bit down the road. Uh, I don't know if you have any Colorado listeners, but uh, my sister lives in Colorado. So I was looking for an excuse to visit her more. So I'm in the process of trying to get admitted into the state of Colorado as well. Might as well go to Florida now. Might as well go to California now and get it all over. We do appreciate you being on the show, though. And I'm very happy that I asked that question because um, the radio program covers the tri-state area, northern New Jersey, um, southern Connecticut, and pretty much all, all the five boroughs and surrounding counties in the immediate New York area. So it's good that you mentioned that you are barred in New Jersey and New York and now going for Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Aranara, all right? And of course, he's there at the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. It's good to have you on. Um, Conrad, um, if you can bring him on at least ever so often to speak with the listeners. I mean, I think it's an extremely important area to well, speak about. You know, I mean, our, our firm is not just immigration and of course, not just personal injury. Case handler, where is he? You know, he has yeah. been... It's been so quiet and peaceful on the show this week. You notice that? <laughs> None of us have to like try to squeeze in a word edgewise, and and you know, we're able, we have plenty of time to answer questions. And yeah, you know, it's just I, I don't know. I'm all discombobulated without the case handler. He'll be back <laughs> next week, folks. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, um, but you know, we have immigration, we have personal injury, we have real estate, we have unemployment, we have uh, employment, we have cr criminal, we have matrimonial. You know, we pretty much run the gamut at the firm in terms of the types of services that we provide. And, um, and you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and I pride myself on the fact that I have brought only what I consider to be the best uh, professionals in that particular field to help our clients. I don't give out referrals. I don't refer other attorneys to clients when they ask me just, just to send out a referral. Uh, I will not refer another attorney unless I know who they are and the type of work that they do, uh, because you know, that's a reflection of me, a reflection of my firm. So we always try to hire the best qualified people and bring in the best qualified people. And 
the crew that we have at the moment, I think, is about as good as it gets. So, Well, you are the architect of the firm, as they would say. The firm has been around for 60 solid years, folks, and uh, great, great work, phenomenal work from what I've seen so far, and uh, also phenomenal attorneys. I want to say thanks to you. I'm Alan E.K., the general, the man with the links, as we say. I want to say thanks to you also, Conrad Pollock, for being a managing partner and putting a great, phenomenal firm together. And I um, want to say thanks to you, Jacob Aronar, for being on and discussing employment-related issues. Looking forward to seeing you in the near future again. You all have yourself an amazing day. Prior results through that guarantee similar outcome, but we know that this is the firm that all the folks tuning in should actually go to. 844-774-3529. Have a great day, guys.